What's up? I'm here with Chris and Scott from the Flatliners. Guys, what's Great happening? Great to be here, man. How's it going? Great to be here. How are you? Uh, I'm good. How are you? It's good. It's things are, things are well. It's, yeah, you guys are going to interview me now. This is what's going to happen. Yeah. It's going to be very it's awkward perfect. and yeah. crazy. Let's go through the album then, because we were saying that nobody's actually gone through track by track. So mm -hmm. uh, the Calming Collection, what can you guys tell us about that? Um, that was um, one of the first songs yeah. we wrote off that I'm record, sure, I, yeah. I think. Yeah. And it's got the clip at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, it's got the a clip. clip. <laughs> clip is awesome. Uh, Spinal Tap, right? <laughs> a lot of people think that it's us doing that. Oh, really? So like, a, like at first, because like, to be honest with you, like, whenever a, a record of ours will come out, I'll be interested like the first few reviews I'll, I'll hear about to see what people think, and then after that, it's kind of like whatever. You know, it's just like. Do so you read them? You actually? Not, yeah. not all. Of them. Okay. Like just like just at first when they start to come out, I'll read a few of them and just be like, oh, I'm curious to see what people think. And then after that, not to sound like a dick, but I'm like, yeah, I just don't care anymore what people think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, <laughs> like, the curiosity gets the better of me for like a week, and then I'm like, yeah, whatever. But don't you have those moments when someone's like, oh man, this sucks, or whatever, and then you're just like, ah. Oh, yeah, I mean, totally you know. I'm gonna find out where you live and, <laughs> and, and come beat yeah. you up. Yeah, you um, virgin. So. But yeah, no, and like, a, a, a few, there was this one review, I don't even know who did it, but they were like, uh, they're basically calling us really arrogant for starting off the record that way because they thought it was us saying that. Oh, really? The whole, like, we are the four horsemen of the rock apocalypse, all this. And we're like, no, it's it's a clip from an old BBC, yeah. uh, like, short film, I guess. It's like a 45-minute long short film about That's this hilarious. band. Yeah, it, it, it's about this band called Bad News, and it actually predates Spinal Tap by, like, a year or so. That's insane. And it's the same mm -hmm. idea, though. But, it, but like, where Spinal Tap are, like, this huge band, and they're, they're they're dwindling. This band has like never been huge. They're like just <laughs> awful. Like they're just yeah. having so they're the like worst luck. Yeah, yeah, pretty yeah, much, man. Pretty kind much. Of, kind of. Yeah, a fictional story. But like, yeah. It's, it, so it was just from that, and we thought it was hilarious. So, but that song it specifically is about um, like a lot of people who have uh, you know careers in finance and things like that, uh, where you know for so long it's been like such a I guess like a safe job to have in a way. Obviously, through like the history of time in the last hundred years, like there have been, there have been you know like stock market crashes and all this stuff, and like the Great Depression, which ended up being a huge like uh, recurring theme in our record. But um, you know, like times have never been so bleak as they are now. You know, for that kind of life to lead. And there are all these people that like you read about these people that, or and and, and sometimes you don't even read about it because it happens more often than you think. But you know, these these men and women that have jobs in that kind of field, and then. You know, things go sour real quick for like a little while, and they freak out, and they have a whole family at home and everything. And there are people that just kill themselves because they lost their job. Yeah. And they they feel so bad about it because they have no money to provide for their family. So instead of trying to like tough it out, they kill themselves. And I know that's kind of a morbid thing to write a song about, but that's basically like like down to the like line. That's what that song is about. These people that hold way too much importance with you know money and just like it's like more important than living and all this stuff and it's a dangerous thing man especially these days you can't you can't rely on it that much anymore yeah you know? totally yeah. actually melanie k told me once uh don't define yourself by your career exactly you know what i mean it's like, like mm -hmm. yeah insane advice exactly you know? and i mean it's and she's totally right man she's she's a wise lady she is um, but I, that's what that song's about and it's kind of it's kind of a weird track to kick off the record but it was just because it was short and fast <laughs> yeah no, it's also <laughs> so a like, badass yeah, cool. track yeah. yeah thanks man <laughs> It's um, still a good record of the year. Yeah, right? I just want to tell you. I just want to tell you that songs are pretty these songs, good. Yeah. Dude, there aren't many songs on this on this record that are about good things. <laughs> to well, be honest, we're going to get a great, dark, dark road. Oh I think yeah, that's the great thing about punk rock, oh, yeah. though. You just uh, it's, it's supposed to be angry, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I'm a pretty angry guy. It's yeah. a chance to get I'm up there. Smiling now, but well, I'm you're a pretty angry. happy guy. But you know, he lets out a lot of angry yeah. things in his lyrics. So. Yeah. Did that? Did you guys get a sense of how bad things were? You know, I guess for people, you know, from touring, like let's say the states. Yeah, you see it a lot. Yeah. And going to Europe, yeah, like you know, like certain areas, you'd, you'd be, we'd be so surprised that like their economy and their like lives, like financially, just even just on a level of happiness, were actually flourishing. Yeah, and at the same time, you know, like everything around them could be in shambles. <coughs> you know what I mean, like, yeah. like you know, sp speaking of you know, like the certain facets of society and how like it has to work, which it's sad. You know what I mean? That money has to play a role. It does, though. You know, yeah. it's 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 strange that you know we're like we human beings, kind of like. I don't know, we kind of see ourselves as the most, uh, I would say, you know, evolved race of all, you know? Like, yeah. we eat animals and stuff like that. Like, I eat animals, I'm not saying, you know, but like, it's just, it's just such a trippy thing. I think about how the human mind works yeah. in the sense of like, this like this whole money thing doesn't actually, it really doesn't have to exist or be as prevalent as it is, but we've just let it become that way. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's like, we're this like, dominant race and all this stuff, apparently, but 
we still can't get our heads out of our asses with that kind of thing, you know? It's also it's hard weird. in our, like, society, especially because it's so capitalist-driven, you know what I mean? Oh, you, yeah. Like, you're yeah. forced to, you know, you're brought up in this, you know, money's... It's just the way it goes, man. Yeah, and as much as you hate it and you don't want it to be that way, you can... There, there are ways, obviously, to get around it. You know, like, bartering system, trading, things like that, like, yeah. you know, um, co-ops and things like that. But at the same time, it comes down to you need money to make any of that happen. Yeah. You know, and it's just sad, so... That's uh, why the hippies are wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mark my words. <laughs> you know it. Uh, okay, next song would be, I guess, Carry the Banner. Yeah. Uh, that was the first single, uh, or the you know, single, what people heard. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> There's no real singles with our band anymore. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's singles a lot these yeah, days. Yeah, I don't think there's any bands around anymore. Uh, but anyways, tell us about that song. That song was basically like the whole theme what, what, what kind of became the theme of the record, because we didn't really set out to write a record about all this stuff, it's just that what we were living, going through, yeah. kind of when I started to write the lyrics well, about. It was an old saying, right? Uh, to carry the banner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's like, it's actually slang that homeless people would use in, uh, in the, the Great, Great Depression. Depression again, yeah. And they would say, like, I'm gonna go carry the banner, which meant that I'm gonna, like, stay out all night, uh, try to avoid getting murdered, you know, or getting locked up for vagrancy charges. And I'm gonna just basically try to figure out life, even though it's the hardest thing to figure out right now. Yeah. So they would say I'm gonna carry the banner, meaning I'm just gonna be a homeless guy. <laughs> yeah. You know, like I have nowhere safe to sleep. All this, uh, and that kind of became like that song kind of um, embodies the whole overall theme of the record. You know, we we're actually gonna call the record "Carry the Banner." Then we realized that Pinhead Gunpowder put out a record called "Carry the Banner." Oh. Okay. Like years ago, we we're like, well, we're not gonna do that. That sucks, yeah. but uh, we can at least name a song after, I guess. Still, so um, yeah, that song is basically just about like you know drawing all the comparisons to like the Great Depression era and the era we find ourselves in now. And also, there are a lot of similarities you can draw between being in a band, especially a band like the band we're in, yeah. and being a homeless person. Yeah. There's a lot of similarities. I feel <laughs> it, man. I feel it. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's go to Bleed. Bleed, okay. I guess, would be the first, uh, is that the first song we have someone uh, guest appearing on, on a track on the record? Um, That's, uh, yeah, the Dillinger 40s are on that song. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But we, we do that. We have uh, people doing oh, backups on that. Uh, I guess Liam Common. from Cancer Rats does like a line or two oh, is he on, on there? Common Collection. Okay. Yeah. Cool. It's, all, it's all just kind of like doubling this, the parts I'd done. And uh, we just wanted to get some friends. Because there's people all over it. Yeah, way too many. It's awesome. Yeah. We're yeah. stoked. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, fun. so uh, bleed. Uh, I know there's a story about uh, an airport and alcohol uh, involved in the Dillinger the, Four. Right. Oh no, yeah, the Dillinger Four story. Because actually, it's interesting because that, that also works into how the lyrics for Bleed started. To you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really think about alcohol that. or airport. Yeah, yeah, airport. Yeah. Both. Yeah. Both. Oh, okay, um, there you go. yeah, but they were in town doing yeah. a show and uh, and they were <laughs> they were getting out of their, their hotel the next day pretty like early and their flight was really late so. Uh, we just mentioned that our jam of studio was right next to the airport. <laughs> Come nice. down and hang out with us, and then uh, we'll give you lift at you know afterwards. So. And uh, yeah, like a few days before the show, like um, you know, I talked to Eric, and like we worked out like, going to the show, and like we brought him a bottle of whiskey to like say, you know, welcome back. Like we we toured with them the previous fall, and we hit it off so well. Cool. And like we love that band. Like I have a Dillinger Four tattoo. It's like it was it was for us. It was amazing. I, I got that after the tour because I was like, yep, that's my badge of honor, basically, Sick. right? And uh, That's yeah, awesome. it was cool. And like we, I, I asked them about you know like what they were doing that weekend, and yeah, like basically it came to that. We basically traded them a ride to the airport for them to sing on our song. And it was cool, man. Sweet, that deal. was awesome. I think Patty uh, slept all day. All day. All day, In the and then office, yeah. finally got up at some point at the night and uh, sang one line. And we, we just handed him a bottle of whiskey, and he sang one line right away, and then dude, just left. He yeah. downed half that bottle of Jameson yeah. when he was in the booth. He he's a jolly man. Oh yeah, he's a great man. He's yeah. the best. Yeah. yeah, that was that was such an honor for the, for like I mean all the people we had involved with the record was really great for us. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> that specifically to have those guys come into the studio was just like I never thought this would happen. You know? Yeah. That was a good day. Uh, one yeah. of my favorite songs is uh, "Here Comes the Trouble." Nice, nice. Uh, yeah. Tell us about that song and. This is a question. Why does the, the there's the slow part at the beginning, but it's, but it's sort of at the end of track three? Yeah, well, uh, yeah. If, if 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 you listen to it on a CD, it actually counts down. It's a minus track. Oh, is it? So okay. if you so, yeah, so you, so if you skip it, it just goes to uh, whatever the next. It's like the is. negative. <laughs> yeah, I remember a lot of a lot of bands did that. Did that stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We we used to be able to rewind. Uh, I forget what album it was. There was an album where you could rewind. 
like from track one and it would go, and it would go yeah. back. So yeah. I think it was the Lit album. <laughs> nice, dude. <laughs> I'm an ass. Uh, <laughs> we actually used to listen to Lit. Oh yes, we did. Yeah, so did I. Um, I think in, I think in uh, elementary school, Chris and I <laughs> you played, know. played you, a you Lit song. You don't think, you know. You know I don't want to really song. admit that I know that. <laughs> Without yeah. a bass guitar, that's uh, cool. Yeah. But uh, tell us about that song, what's that song about? Here um, Comes Trouble? Yeah. Uh, uh, it's, it's pretty obvious, it's about yeah. uh, you know, um, relationships yeah. getting tampered with from us yeah. being on tour all the time. Yeah. And Family and, and we really are on tour a whole time. Yeah. Oh, time. yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I yeah, fuck it. <laughs> fuck? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I um, almost dropped it. Yeah, I mean, the lyrics are pretty self explanatory. Like, I usually enjoy <laughs> being a little cryptic with the way I write lyrics, but that song, there was like no other way to go about yeah. it, pretty much. I mean, and you, you again, yeah. you know, in your, when you're in that minus, you know what it's about. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure, for sure. I mean, uh, yeah, basically just like the song. I wrote for like my family and everyone else's families in the band and like the family we have to, we've created together and like you know friends even girlfriends and stuff like that just people that you you know you go away from you know to do your own thing and like you're stoked because you know like not to be away from them but to go off and like try to accomplish this thing that we've been tr like shooting for for you know eight years now yeah but every band shoots for you know and yeah. Uh, and yeah it, it just you leave people behind and after a while it kind of catches up with you, and you feel like a dick about it. To be honest, well, so we wrote the song that. Uh, yeah, it's our it's 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 our, it's, 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 it's our way of to apologize and thank the people that are really important to us that have stuck by us. You know, that's awesome. It's a sad song. Yeah, it's a sad yeah. song. It's a fast one though. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually started it's writing the riff. Uh, we <laughs> this is like going to be way too obvious, but we we were on tour in Europe uh, last summer because that was one of the like last songs we wrote for that record, and we played a show. We played a few shows with a Wilhelm scream. And we went to watch them, and our show that specific day was their after party. And I started writing that riff after watching them. Oh, that totally <laughs> makes sense. Like, yeah, and I was like, shit, man. Like, we uh, rip off all of our friends' bands. <laughs> yeah. But they're such an awesome band, you know? And like, yeah. I just wanted to, like, I had the, some of the lyrics like written out just like without a melody or idea. And I was like, wow, whatever, man. Like, I, I, I saw that riff and I saw those lyrics and I just put them together. And it's a very weird, like, mishmash. Like juxtaposition of like those kind of raw feelings, yeah. But at the same time, like you know, the same could be said that like they're also alike in the sense that they're both just fucking, sorry, they're both just uh, just it's going for it's it, a, I guess, you know. Right. Like yeah. so, I don't know. Came it, out in an interesting way. Yeah. yeah. I mean, time flies, dude. It does. It really oh my does. god, yeah. Uh, I can relate to that song. Yeah. Um, okay, next would be uh, he was a jazz man. Mm. You know, you know the order better than us. I it's think. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fuck up. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like already thinking, like shit. I'm running What's out. What's next? Um, yeah. I don't know what that song's about. <laughs> <laughs> I don't write lyrics. Do you Jazz right man, shit hawks. I no. just write riffs, bro. The, the the riff, the initial like verse riff uh, for that song, and the lyrics, the initial lyrics, without being the chorus, but everything else kind of uh, for Jazz Man came about while we were actually writing the Great Awake, or sorry, while we were recording the Great Awake. Oh no way. And uh, my grandfather got really sick uh, and he passed away while we were recording that record. So I would, we'd have these long days in the studio and then I would go visit him in the hospital at night for a couple hours then come back to the studio and sleep there, have a really long day, like the same thing, like over and over and over again. And every day I'd go in and I would, you know, we've all been there, like I just saw him, like the smartest, most influential, like, you know, m like man I've ever known really in my family, you know, like he, he was like slipping away. And it was like, obviously it happens to everybody, it was so hard to deal with, you know. And because it's never easy, and uh, yeah, that song is basically just it started out just going out to him. Um, I, I had that riff, and I, I put some lyrics to it, and then after that, man, like it just you know, we were, we released The Great Awake, and we had the song Eulogy, which we wrote for a friend of ours who passed away, and we started to hear all these stories about like, like how that song can help people, which is very I don't know, flattering is the a weird word to use, but it's like it's it's interesting to hear, I can say that, you know what I mean, and yeah. uh. And it's we're glad that song helped people. But then we'd hear all these stories, and then like more family members, more friends of ours passed away. And then the chorus from of that song basically just uh, to Jasmine it just came from a really hopeless spot where I was just like, man, all these people are dying. Like, fuck it. You know, basically that was it. Yeah. This is like an Oprah interview, man. You're gonna make. <laughs> like I we said, dude, this record is a pretty big bummer. <laughs> yeah. For real, it is a bummer. Like, and it's you know sometimes it's hard singing the songs. It really is. Uh, but yeah, like that song, the, the chorus was just something after all this had caught up with me. I was just like, everyone dies, and at this point, life sucks. <laughs> That's well, it. Especially, especially when we well, put it, putting out songs like that, though, you really do get kids coming up to you and telling you how much the song helped them through a of certain course. time. And yeah, that's, yeah. that really is. You know, it's a nice thing to hear. You're glad that you can mm. help help people out with music. Yeah. And, you know. Well, I mean, it's cliche to say, but 
hard times makes for good music. We know of that. Of course, yeah. And, uh, yeah. But there is a sense, I mean, I know it's probably hard to, to revisit that place on stage, you know, when you're performing the same yeah. song over and over again. But at the same time, there's got to be a sense of uh, catharsis there as oh, well. Oh, it right? is. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the thing, too. I mean, like, you can go through so much, like, you know, awful stuff in your life, but if you have an outlet for it, like, you know, we do. Blammo. It works, you know? Yeah. Explore Music wears English Laundry Apparel.